Hello. Um, I thought I'd do a little update video on some of my soaps. I don't have um, any more of my original shea butter soap because it had DOS. I ended up throwing it all out. But um, I did do this most recent um, batch of it and I super fatted it 12% and it seems to be doing really, really well. Really well. So that's good. Um, this is my oatmeal, oat milk soap, sorry, not oatmeal soap, and um, it changes after a while when it's in the shower, and it's changed a little bit in color. Unfortunately, you can't tell on camera, but it's gotten a little bit more yellowish, so I think next time I'm going to add some preservative to that uh, recipe. And these are my avocado rebatch. I still have them left. I'm not throwing them out, I'm using them. I'm using them for like a facial bar and they work really well once every couple of days and if I have um, have any acne or something I just use this and after a couple of days it's gone so I love that love it um, this is my palm oil soap what's left over um, from the batch the last batch that I did it uh, it doesn't really smell very much anymore and I think it's because I put about two tablespoons of honey in it and you can do that with honey with hot process it, and it doesn't like you'll notice there isn't any brown spots I noticed with cold process when you use honey if you use too much it'll get brown spots but this is hot process and I didn't I didn't get any brown spots at all and that's two tablespoons I used in the pound although I did watch a new episode of the soap queen and for her palm oil she says when you use the palm oil you actually have to melt down the whole container and mix it all up and then measure out your oils because you need all of the um, different kinds of essential acids all the different kinds of fat that are in the palm oil you need all of those fatty acids mixed up in order to be accurate for your lie calculator so that's new. <laughs> Wish I'd known that a while ago. But anyway, um, these are my shaving soap. Same recipe, shea recipe, 12% super fat. Turned out fabulous. Fabulous, and it smells so yummy. It does have white spots in it, which I was a bit concerned about, but um, after doing some more research and testing them, um, I believe that the white spots are because I poured it into a really hot crock pot and the difference in the temperatures can sometimes uh, do that to your fatty acids, do that to some of the fat, especially the shea butter. And I made this batch recently, it's my new baby soap and I used shea butter, um, I just shaved a little bit of shea butter, a little tiny bit of coconut oil, and olive oil. It's mostly just olive oil, and that's it. Nothing else. And it works fabulous. My daughter has eczema. I made her one out of palm oil, and um, it didn't really work as well as I hoped it would, so I threw the rest of those out, and then I made this one, and it works really well. <coughs> so this is what's left over of... Uh, I poured it, some of it out into another bottle and this is what it looked like before I did that. What I did was I took what was on top off. It was clearer than this in these bottles so it was that clear. So I was like, hey, why not try it out? So <laughs> I took the top part off. I scooped it out as much as I could into another container and then the middle part, which is the soap, is the part that I used and then this is the sediment on the bottom and that always occurs, the sediment. And then uh, I did that with the small bottles and I put it in this. And I added some rosemary extract to it. It smells a little bit like grapefruit because I use grapefruit essential oil but there is something else in the smell and I don't know what it is. But see the gooey stuff on top? That's just gross. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like it at all. I think it's gross. I don't like it, and I don't want that on my soap. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to use the same recipe. I'm going to use a 10% lye excess. 
and I'm not going to add any oat milk to it because I think that's what the smell is. I think the uh, liquid soap is more um, susceptible to rancidity because of the high amount of water that's in it than bar soap is. So I think that the oat milk might have gone bad in it, which is the little smell in it. Because I didn't put anything other than um, vitamin E oil for preservative. And, uh, and uh, you'll notice in all shampoos, they usually include a preservative. They're going to have any type of food or herb or anything like that. So I'm going to do that next time. I'm going to put uh, paraben-free, um, um, uh, mostly natural anyway, uh, preservative in there as well. And I found some bamboo extract, which I'm really excited about. My favorite shampoo, the Biolage Matrix uh, Strengthening Shampoo, um, has bamboo extract in it, which has a lot of silica in it, which is the best shampoo I've ever tried for my hair. Um, plus, I've also found out that so my soap has a pH of 7, and I also found out that when you make a shampoo, in particular for a liquid soap, you want the pH to be between 5 and 6 instead of as high as 7 because um, you want it more acidic so that after um, the soap or the I forget the word for it right now. After the stuff binds to the dirt and oils, it's the acidic part that helps rinse it away from your hair when you um, when you rinse the soap out of your hair. So uh, I'm going to add um, extra citric acid to the next recipe to try and get the pH as low as I possibly can. And it says in the natural liquid soap book that you can use citric acid to um, lower the pH level to as low as 4, but they don't recommend it, but I'm going to do it anyway, <laughs> because uh, it worked really well on my hair, but it felt like there was stuff left on my hair, and even though it was soft, and it was a little bit dull, and uh, a little bit weighty. Okay, this is my cocoa butter first cold process recipe. I forgot to show you that. <laughs> But uh, I use the brown part is um, cocoa butter, and then uh, you can't, I don't think you can see it on here. Focus camera. No, it's not showing up, but this middle part was a nice creamy color, but now it has like little dots in it. But it didn't really seem to gel all the way. Just a nice bold color. Oh, there you can see it really well there. See the top? How it's so, like, the color is so muted compared to the middle? <laughs> Weird, eh? Nice swirl, though. I was really happy with that. I wanted to add this one as well. It's um, my lavender soap. And I made this one. I made this one using um, alkanat root as an oil. It was an uh, infused oil, and I made about two pounds of it, and added about a quarter of a cup of the infused oil. I wasn't expecting it to turn out this dark a color. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I think I might have added a little bit too much, but <clears throat> it smells really nice. I used um, French lavender for the smell. Um, next time, I think I'm going to add a lot less of the Alcanet, um oil infusion and I'll get a nice like pretty um, pale lavender color. I'm actually pretty happy that it turned out purple because this is really cool when you make it. It turns from a beautiful pinkish red color to a, oh, a, the most beautiful robin's egg blue I ever saw and then uh, and then it turned like gray and I was so disappointed when it was like a really really dark dark gray color when it started cooking and then it turned to this purple color which I was pretty happy with <laughs> so it was pretty cool pretty cool process anyway so I'd like to show it share it with you so that's probably what my next video is going to be bye happy soaping